that I want to look at today has to do with how we are taking square stock and creating a round with that. Um, so I have two different softwares that I'm going to look at today, Vectric, Aspire, and Carveco Maker Plus. Carveco Maker Plus, I already have the perpetual license for that, so I've already invested the money. Um, right now, I'm looking at investing money into Vectric Aspire, but I'm really not sure if I want to do that yet. It is a significant plunge, uh, almost $2,000 to get that software. I know that for myself and a lot of the woodworkers out there, we don't just have $2,000 lying around. So my first impression of Carveco and Carveco's solution to the problem of how they're going to uh, produce G-code for a fourth axis, um, it looks like it's just a wrapping tool, honestly. It doesn't, it doesn't really process 3D objects. When you import a STL, uh, it has trouble um, copying and pasting that 3D STL into the actual sphere. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. If you go into a uh, new rotary model over here in the newer versions of Carveco, you have your, your setup here. Um, just for an example, we'll use a diameter of 3 inches and a length of 12 inches along our x-axis. So over here on your right side, you have this toggle rotary flat tool. Um, and this is going to be how you're toggling between the flat version of what you're trying to produce and the actual sphere. So when you go up here to import an STL, I have this skull here, uh, which we're going to try to import. Everybody's trying to figure out how to make this skull because Onefinity advertised it on their website. Um, so this is the actual file. Skull V1 is from Thingiverse. You can download it for free. I'm going to go ahead and try to drop this in here. Um, it's really kind of difficult to work with this in CarveCo because it comes out so huge. Um, that's one of the benefits of Vectric that I can already tell you about. Uh, Vectric does a lot of this automatically. So there's a lot of adjustments that need to be made um, to try to get to where we need to go here. So X size, my rotary is not going to be that big, so we're going to go with 2.5 inches. Go and apply that, hit center. Um, come back in here. We see that on our sphere, Carveco is trying to put this skull in there. Ideally, if we want to produce this skull... Um, we need it to be inside the sphere so that way the software can produce G-code to cut it out of the sphere. Uh, so we'll just try to fit this in here. We'll keep resizing until it gets there. Um, take the Z down. Negative 0 0.5 is kind of there. Um, the problem with this is that when you go to produce the tool paths to try to cut this skull out, uh, Carveco will not recognize that the skull is inside the sphere instead it tries to wrap it so when you look at your 3d file versus how this is wrapped um, obviously this isn't going to work maybe i'm missing something here uh, if i am please let me know in the comments so i can get going in the right direction with this but as of right now it looks like carveco can only produce tool paths in a wrapping style so I'll show you a quick example of that. I'm going to go ahead and open up a new uh, rotary model here. And I'll import one of my uh, topographical 3D models. So I have an eagle set up for that. Okay, so I'll go ahead and drop this eagle one in here. We'll get it moved to the center, resized sphere, which is a 3 by 12 So we'll go... Uh, 10 on the X size, recenter. Um, and then we'll go ahead and paste that down. Okay. I'm not going to mess with this too much. I just want to show you guys what happens here. So click on your toggle rotary flat tool, and you can see that what Carveco has done is it's wrapped uh, the 3D image around the sphere. Um, so that's perfectly fine. You can do a lot with that. Um, you know, you can make cool designs on your rotary and everything. It just, it's not going to work for cutting out 3D models. Uh, which I know that a lot of y'all out there are looking to do that. Um, so as of now, I have not solved. Uh, I, I'm not sure if there's a way we can do it with Carveco, uh, but I will show you how we can do it with Vectric Aspire. And so before I get into that, I want to make sure to show you how we can take square stock uh, and create a sphere out of it with Carveco. Um, before we move on to Vectric. So this is a perfectly square piece of maple, uh, kind of like the example I have, but this one is 1.8 inches around, um, and then it's about approximately 12 to 13 inches long. So what we're trying to do here with these tool paths is we're trying to create a cylinder out of this, um, so that way we can make round things on our revolution, which is the whole reason why we got a fourth axis in the first place, right? 
The issue that you run into with the Carpco toolpath is that's it's going to try to take too much off at one time, which means that you're running the risk of breaking your bit uh, while you do this. In comparison, the Vectric software calculates the time it needs to go around at the level that you want it to. So where you can do that with Carpco, the problem with Carpco is that it will go all the way around and then when it comes up to here, it still thinks it's a sphere, um, so you're really carving air there. So I'd say I would guesstimate it's probably about a 50% waste of time running that toolpath. It would work, but Vectric, the Vectric toolpaths are going to be a lot more efficient in this manner because it calculates where that air is and then it doesn't have a, uh, a toolpath run through that area. So on this example, this piece is pretty small. So I do believe that my quarter inch in here could handle uh, all, of the, all of the corners here. But when you're looking at a, a square stock of up to six or seven inches, there's no way that my bit is gonna be able to cut um, a half inch of material at a time without breaking that bit. And so I went ahead and opened up a new rotary model. As you can see, Carfco does not have the option to add square stock. Um, so we need to kind of do some conversions with the tool paths uh, to make this work. Because as you saw in the video from downstairs, um, if you take too much off per pass, then you're probably going to break your bit. Um, because there's going to be more material here in this area than there is here on the top side of that, of that square. So in order to set this up on the toolpath, uh, go to your flat view. You're going to need a vector. We'll go ahead and just draw a square there, corner to corner. Um, it's going to be the area clearance toolpath down here in 2D toolpaths. Click on that. Now, if you click on the untitled section here in uh, project up on your top right, uh, you have your wrapped relief information down here. Uh, indicates the diameter is three inches, which is what we set it at. Um, we need to make sure that any material that we take off is above the is around uh, 2.9 to three inches. So the key to this whole tool path here is the start depth. Um, in order to make sure that your bit is not taking off too much material at one time, which would break the bit, uh, we need to start the depth at. I would say, well, it depends on how big your square is, but it needs to be above the surface. So we're gonna go with a negative uh, 0 0.25. And then my finished depth, I'm probably just going to take off a uh, 0 0.15 of material just to make sure that that sphere is sphering. So we'll add our tool, probably do this with a quarter inch Jenny, um, just for an example. Your raster is going to be the direction in which this is going to take the material per pass. Um, so I'm going to go with raster. Uh, material thickness, this is going to be half of the diameter of the model. So 1.5 is half of 3. Go ahead and hit OK there. Switch back to my flat mode, and then I'll go ahead and calculate that toolpath. Um, so just to show you guys, we'll, we'll run the simulation on this. Simulation control bar and switch back to sphere mode here so that way we can see what's happening. So you can see that we are starting above the surface of the material, which means that I can hit these square edges without worrying about breaking my bit. Um, we'll go ahead and hit play. And basically this is just gonna go all the way, all the way around the sphere per pass um, that I indicated. So in this case, it's going to be, um, looks like three passes to get it to where I want it to be. Uh, but the bottom line is that the bit is not going to be taking uh, too much material off of those square edge corners there. So that's one way you can do it in Carvco. Um, it's not really ideal um, when you compare it to Vectric. Vectric has a whole tool that you can use um, to do this whole process pretty much automatically. I'm going to go ahead and show you the guys that now. Okay, so here I have the trial version of Aspire. Um, I have not spent thousand dollars to purchase this software yet uh, but I do get a good overview of what we can do with it uh, with the trial software so I'm gonna go up here hit uh, create new file and then again my example job size up here in the top left is going to be 12 diameter 3 um, keep everything here uh, very high tends to be a little bit slower for rotary um, I prefer it that way click on OK Okay, so one thing you have to do in Vectric before you do uh, any toolpaths, you have to make sure your material is set up up here, top right material setup. Click on set. 
Uh, diameter is still three inches, X, Y datum, bottom left. Um, center of the cylinder is where we're gonna find our Z. Obviously, that's just an example, so I'm not actually gonna put this on the machine right now. Also, I don't have my revolution yet. So, uh, go ahead and click on OK. Okay, so now here's the uh, gadget tool up here in Vectric. Um, you have the wrapping button down here, create rounding toolpath. That's got what we're gonna be using to load our square stock into the machine. Um, so here, just for an example, size of square blank, uh, we'll go with, this is a four inch square. And so there's three different machining methods you can choose here, radial. Um, this is just gonna go around the cylinder, cutting off your square edges there. Uh, raster, that's gonna be along your X. Uh, optimized raster, this is going to uh, cut off the corners first. And this is this is probably what you're gonna want most of the time. That's gonna make sure that your bit doesn't break. It's gonna make sure that it's not taking off too much material at one time. So I'll go ahead and select a uh, quarter inch quarter inch end mill here for this. We'll just go with the stock settings for now. Um, this is the trial software again, so I haven't modified any of this stuff. So select that tool and then click on OK. So now off to the right side, you'll see I have a rounding tool path created. Let's go ahead and click on that. I can see that it's set up uh, pretty much how I want to close that out. We need to um, simulate this. Make sure you go up here to 3D view to take a look at what we're actually doing here. Um, so in Vectric, you use the right mouse button to maneuver uh, the model. And as you can see, it's created all of these tool paths here to make sure that you don't break your bit and you're not making uh, too taking too much material per pass here. And that's literally it for Vectric. Now all you have to do is go up here and save your tool paths and it will punch some G-code out for you that you can put on your machine. Um, you send it to the uh, rotary, your revolution, if you will, and it'll round your square material. Um, so I found that to be really easy. Uh, does it justify me spending $2,000 on this software right now? No does not. Um, so I'm going to be doing some additional research into this program to see if I can make it worth it. Maybe I can make some extra extra sales this year to where I can pay for that. We'll see. Um, but I'm also going to go ahead and show you guys how this handles the 3D models that we were talking about earlier. So I'll go ahead and go up here and create a new rotary model. Okay, we'll stick with a 12, uh, 12 inch by three inch. We're gonna go up here to import a component or 3D model button. Click on that. And I have the Skull V1 saved right here. We'll open that up, go and see the, well, it automatically did it for me. Over here on the left, there's several different uh, features that you can use to set this up how you want. Uh, the rotation about the Z axis. These are some automatic presets that are already here makes things really simple for you. So something that's important over here that you need to change when you go to import your 3D model, uh, remember that we're working with a 12, uh, 12 inch long by three inch diameter. Um, so the model diameter on this model was automatically at 232 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that to two. Well, I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go with three inch diameter. That's gonna max out my material. Okay, go, I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay there. All right, so far so good. So now I'm just gonna make a couple of generic uh, tool paths. We're gonna do a roughing tool path and a finishing tool path just to finish this up. Uh, preset calculations, we're using a quarter inch end mill and a 16th inch end mill on the finishing. So we'll go ahead and calculate that. You'll see how it makes all of the rotor rotary calculations. Um, this is probably gonna take a significant amount of time. So in a real project, I would probably tweak this a little bit more. Um, come back into tool paths here and we'll create a finishing tool path as well. Calculate that. Uh, we have ball nose eighth inch here. I'm gonna leave it there just for just for this example, but I would probably be using a 16th inch Ginny um, to make sure that I get all the fine details in this skull. Okay, so, so far for Vectric, this has all seemed pretty simple. Uh, we've taken square stock, we've turned it into a cylinder, and we've placed a 3D model inside this, the uh, cylinder, and now we're gonna try to cut it out. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and preview these tool paths that we've made. Come back over here into tool paths and click on preview tool paths. We have both check marked here. Go ahead and click on play so we can see how this is gonna work. 
So this is basically showing us how um, the tool is going to be moving on a flat plane, uh, but it has calculated to move the rotary at the same time. So this is basically carving it out as the rotary spins. You can see the tool moving left to right on the toolpath. We'll go ahead and fast forward to the end of this. And it produces this for us. Now there are things, there are additional things that need to be done here. Uh, tabs need to be added on the sides. Uh, so that way the model doesn't fall out of your rotary. Vectric seems to make this a lot more simple when it comes to uh, creating your 3D toolpaths. And then especially when it comes to creating a round out of a square stock. Um, to me, that's a, that's a huge benefit uh, for this software to have. Arfco doesn't have that. You need to kind of manipulate the flat plane toolpath to produce that, where Vectric will do it all automatically for you. Now, that being said, Vectric is super expensive. I think it's running like $19.95 for a permanent uh, license right now. So it's a good that it's not a subscription service, but it's also crazy expensive for this. Um, so you would need to be able to justify through your work that you can actually produce that much money in a specific time frame. You know, that's all up to you if it's worth it for you. Uh, for me right now, it's a little bit too expensive or it's a lot of bit too expensive. So I need to make some sales and uh, get some more cash flow going before I can actually invest in this product. I already have the perpetual license for Carveco, which also was an investment. Um, so at that time I would have both of these softwares, which doesn't make sense. Uh, let me know how you guys feel in the comments. Uh, it's super expensive, but it's very helpful. I'd also like to hear from other people who have a uh, Onefinity Revolution on order right now. Uh, how do you guys feel and what you guys are going to be creating with those machines? I'm super excited to hear from you. Uh, let me know what your ideas are in the comments. Thanks. Mm -hmm.